Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Kimberly Leverett. I'm the Executive Director of Education and Training with the Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce. I am so excited to be joined by a great group of educational leaders as we have a conversation this afternoon around summer learning for our students in grades K through 12. And I would like to introduce our panel from Flint Community Schools. I would like to welcome Ms. Delenn Smith, Delenn is the Curriculum Development Specialist for Flint Community Schools, as well as Stephanie Elder. They're our fearless summer school leaders uh, for Flint Community Schools. I would also like to welcome back Carrie Downs. Carrie is the Program Manager of Special Projects with the Flint Community Education Initiative. Welcome back, Carrie. And of course, Tari, who's a regular with us at all times. Uh, Tari is our Program Director with UQuest. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So as we talk about um, the excitement around summer learning and our new program, you know, there's this term um, that we talk about as far as learning as a distance that's used to describe students engaged in learning that happens outside of the traditional school building. So how does summer school support and engage um, our students at a distance? And we'll start that question with Delenn and Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Leverett. So really uh, summer school engages and supports our students, especially now because they're just much more proficient at virtual learning. So with that proficiency, I think, comes the, the ability and the desire really to show up for learning. And when students show up, what's going to happen is that learning is going to be strengthened over the summer so that it can be carried into the new school year. Great. Stephanie? So we, under, we understand that as... Um, we're in this current COVID crisis and we have to do some things differently. We want to be creative because we still know our students need that engagement. Um, a lot of times we get a slide over the summer where there's a little bit of a gap between when we leave in the spring and we return in the fall. And so we wanted to be really proactive in addressing that right now and providing them opportunities that are not just screen time and computer based, but that are hands on, active. Um, and so we've, we've partnered with some great organizations, CRIM and YouthQuest and the um, National Inventors Hall of Fame to offer some really great programs, I think, this year. Great. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm super excited about the programs that we're offering for our students through the Flint Community Schools. You know, when Stephanie mentions it's not just about virtual screen time, I think sometimes parents, when we talk about distance learning, we think, oh, my child's going to be in front of the computer all day. And that's really not the intent. I know that the great work that Dylan and Stephanie have done in planning includes kids getting some hands-on kits. Um, so they're not just connecting with the teacher virtually, but they're also getting to do lots of creation um, and get their hands in that learning, which I think sounds so fantastic. Um, super excited about all the opportunities that our kids are having. I know we've expanded our reach, so we've doubled the size of the kids that are going to be able to participate specifically in the K-5 program, and I think that's so fantastic. It's a much-needed service, we know. Um, just because summer's here doesn't mean that our kids need to kind of disengage with their learning. This is a great opportunity to make sure that our kids in Flint are the best prepared, so when we return to school in the fall, our kids are ready to go and they haven't missed a beat. That is wonderful. Yeah, I would agree with that. And what uh, Stephanie and Delenn said, um, not only does it mitigate the summer slide and the learning loss, but it gives students the opportunity to stay connected with their friends, with their teachers. Um, they have the ability to build new relationships in small groups. Um, and maintaining these healthy connections are going to be crucial for student success uh, when they re-enter the school in the fall. So summer programs, it gives students a way to connect their learning to the real world in a fun and experiential way. And it also helps them keep up with those social skills that will help them to be successful in the fall as well. Great. Thank you. Those are all so important and so critical to our students' success. Uh, so let's talk about what parents should expect in terms of literacy and math support that will be provided to the students um, during this platform. And what does that look like in terms of assisting our students in mitigating that summer loss, which is so critical? So I will um, start. So in the K-5 program, we're going to have four weeks of, of what we are calling camps. 
So week one will be a flight camp where students are learning about principles of flight and they're going outdoors to experiment and with paper airplanes and customize their own flight robots. And within all of these camps, there are literacy and math activities embedded. Students may not realize it, but there are lots of opportunities to read and write and problem solve. So week two, we have rescue camp where they're going to uh, protect the earth's ecosystems. They're gonna have LED lights to make glowing flowers. They're gonna build parachutes that airdrop um, animals. The week three is a design camp where they're going to use their materials that they get in their kits to create sketches and build prototypes and design logos and then pitch their products. And then on the fourth week, we're gonna have a champion camp. And in this one, they're gonna use design thinking to build an ultimate sports complex. And then they're gonna head outside and, and play their new games. So a part of this also, we would know we need to provide some extra support for our struggling readers that have been identified throughout the school year. So we have an additional set of intervention teachers that are going to work with students one-on-one -on -one outside of these camps, one-on-one -on -one for a half an hour with that extra reading support time. And then all other students will also be offered interactive story time and some small group activities to um, like Carrie mentioned and Tari mentioned, building connections with their peers and another adult leader. Great, thank and you. So in terms of math and literacy support, um, our sixth through eighth graders, they're gonna get to explore and experience actually multiple literacies. And so even though all of the academic activities will involve reading and writing, speaking, listening and viewing, uh, our students are also going to be learning about financial literacy and math literacy. Mm -hmm. And I want to be sure to mention that because you asked Dr. Leverett about best practices. And so we will be tapping into best practices all over the course of the summer. Um, one way that we're going to do that is through small group instruction. And so our students will be learning in groups of 10 or less, because you can probably imagine that a, a virtual group of 30 students is, is, you know, might be more than what, what anyone could handle. Um, another best practice, making curriculum connections. People don't often think that math and literacy are connected, yet they are. And so we wanna tap into that and help students co connect those dots. Um, we're also going to tap into students' prior knowledge. And so that just means we're gonna meet them where they are with what they already know, and then take the learning from there. Um, I don't want to forget to mention mm -hmm. that our ninth through 12th graders will be uh, involved in credit recovery. And so the best practice there is differentiation. And so each class that each student takes in our re credit recovery program will be designed specifically for them to meet their specific needs. So. That is great. Sounds like a comprehensive summer program that has considered all of the aspects that our students need, whether it's intervention or whether it's a, a stretch to um, extend and challenge their thinking and learning. So that is great. We certainly uh, appreciate all of your efforts in, in bringing this all together. It should be very exciting for our students and community. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Kim, if I, if I could just chime in, there is something also um, that's unique to the middle school program yes. this year. Uh, that will be our sixth through eighth graders. In terms of math literacy, we'll be utilizing the Algebra Project. Um, it's a program that was founded by civil rights activist Robert Moses, and it helps students to gain math literacy skills using visual models and games. Um, it incorporates like fun, low stakes, competitive games that kids of all learning abilities enjoy. And it has a sister program, which is called the Young People's Project. And mm -hmm. that will train our high school students and our, our college mm -hmm. students to work with some of those younger students so they can make some of those near peer connections. We know that younger students often look up to those high schoolers as role models. Um, so it's a great way to take that intimidating factor out of math for our students, which is one of the most challenging subjects they face, particularly in communities of color and low income areas. So we're really excited to be able to partner with the Algebra Project and the Young People Project this summer um, and to help our students gain those math skills that will help them in middle school, high school, and even on into college. Great. Thank you. So, Tari, we'll just have, we'll just continue this next question with, with you and Carrie, just in terms of how will Youth Quest, um, CRIM, Community mm -hmm initiative, how will partners support our students' social emotional learning, 
and their academics in terms of enrichment. Can can we start with you on that, Tari? Right. So we mentioned before that a lot of SEL happens uh, organically when students are in school. Um, they make connections with their peers. They build strong relationships that can continue even in the virtual space. Um, so again, in those small groups, they're going to have some opportunities to build those relationships, to strengthen those relationships. They'll also get to work on some critical thinking skills, some problem solving. Uh, they'll also be exposed right. to some mindfulness. And Carrie can talk a little bit more um, about that. Um, and again, just strengthening those students in the area of SEL, it's going to help them be more successful when they reintegrate into school in the fall. So SEL is actually going to be embedded into everything that we do. Mm. And I'm super excited about all the things that Flint Community Schools is offering this summer, um, specifically so that we're being responsive to our kids. You know, I know lots of schools and lots of organizations are doing virtual learning. The difference with the Flint Community Schools model that we're using this summer is that our students know the instructors, they know the youth class staff that are connecting with them virtually. So it's not just maybe a faraway teacher that you've never met before and, and maybe they don't understand the way that you're um, you're gonna learn best. Uh, we have staff members from youth class and from um, Flint schools, they know the kids, they already have relationships with them. And I think that gives them an opportunity to be as responsive for our kids as possible when they are identifying that they have other needs. Another opportunity we have through the Flint Community Education Initiative is that um, while expanded learning and best serving our kids in academics is one component of our work, we also have five other components that we work with and support the community in. One of those is health services. So we have community health workers who are still on the job as we speak. And while they're working remotely, they're still connecting with families and they'll continue to do that through the summer. So if we have a family who's identified a basic need that they need support with, or even if it's that their child needs additional reading materials, um, the community education initiative is in a position to make sure we get that delivered to the doorstep, whether those are reading packs that are being sent to the home because the child needs additional reading material, or it's because maybe a family is in need of some um, emergency food, we can have those deliveries made to the home as well. You know, when we think about social emotional learning, we know it's all, it's the whole big picture, right? It's providing wraparound services, exactly what Tara said, meeting them where they are and making sure that we're meeting their needs. So when they are in that virtual space, when they do have these great learning kits in their hands, they're ready to do great learning because we've met all of their other needs. So we're doing things like adult programming through the summer. We do some parent and child time activities as well. Um, our mindfulness team, as we speak, is putting together plans to support our kids doing mindfulness instruction with the kids um, in conjunction with the work that the teachers are doing from Flint Community Schools as well as the Youth Plus staff. We're also going to be providing um, physical activity kits for kids um, and then be doing physical activity lessons that connect with the sports equipment that kids get to take home. And then our nutrition team is also doing lots of lessons to make sure that kids are making smart choices with their nutrition and making it as fun as possible, right? So these aren't kids. Our kids are not going to be in the summer working out of workbooks and, and doing worksheets or even, you know, virtual worksheets, which I think are um, lots of other districts are using. Um, we're doing hands-on learning with a supportive team to provide wraparound services to meet our kids exactly where they are. And so if we do have a child who's struggling with maybe some trauma, we have a team of people who are ready to step up and help them. Um, we're not just gonna push through the curriculum, we're gonna be as responsible as possible to all of their needs. So when they're working with their certified teachers through Flint Community Schools, they're ready to do great learning. That is really great. I just thank you guys so much for this opportunity again to talk about summer school this afternoon because we're really talking about the whole child and the services that we provide are really geared at meeting the needs of the whole child, whether we're again, Carrie, talking about the nutrition, whether we're talking about the academics, um, any kind of support, we're really being responsive and meeting our students and community um, where they're at. But I know that for so many students and families, um, one of the highlights of the summer is being able to travel and being um, exposed to um, um, different opportunities and areas in the community or even within the state of Michigan. And kids love to take field trips. So I wanted to know, um, Stephanie or Delenn, are there any uh, plans underway for any virtual field trips in the future as, as part of summer school for our students? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so because like you said, Dr. Leverett, what we what we know is that we want for our students to be well-rounded. 
And so for our middle school programming, our sixth through eighth graders, uh, they're going to get a chance to experience virtual field trips that are more in the area of the arts and sciences to complement their math and literacy learning. And so they're going to, to have an opportunity to explore uh, space, uh, museums, zoos, other national uh, outdoor attractions. And again, to complement that academic learning. Great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And along in the elementary program, we'll be doing the same. So we have plans to virtually visit the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History. Uh, we want to go on a virtual tour of Mars and then visit San Diego and Cincinnati zoos. They have some live web cams or animal cams that are a little more interactive. And so while we know it's disappointing to not actually be able to physically travel to a place, we are offering incentives for for, for those who participate, that family passes will be available mm -hmm. to zoos. I wish we could fly everyone to San Diego, but mm -hmm. to our more local zoos, Potter Park and the Detroit Zoo, we'll be offering families passes to those when those places are safe to open. Okay, great. And then the other question that I wanted to sort of ask and get everyone's um, response was just in terms of the relationship aspect, you know, you cannot teach me unless you reach me and how important those face-to-face -face relationships are with our students. And what are some of the ways or strategies that you found successful in this virtual platform that can continue to be built with our students around the teacher-student relationship? Mm -hmm. So as, go ahead, Delenn. So I, I just wanted to capture what you said, Dr. Leverett, about really operating outside of face-to-face -face instruction right now, because it is obviously much easier to build relationships face-to-face. -face. Um, but I think though in order, it still can be done, but in order to do it, I think that teachers have to engage with students in conversations about other things outside of academics. Um, they have to talk with students about how they're coping First of all, with all of this, they have to continue to talk with students about their goals, their hopes, their dreams. Um, but then by the same token, because that's not a one way street, teachers have to be willing to share those things about themselves. And that really is how the relationships are built, uh, even virtually. Yes. Great. I agree. And as Delina alluded to earlier, we're being very intentional about keeping our class sizes small. We know the bigger the, the session of virtual, the smaller the face gets on the screen, and we don't want that. So we're intentionally making our session sizes really small and having students surrounded by multiple adults in breakout sessions so that we can have those check-ins regularly every day, um, have some interactive games and things where we're building those relationships in smaller settings. Great. Yeah, Dr. Lovett, I just want to share, you know, um, Flint Community Schools is already putting um, lots of strategies in place about supporting our kids through transition. We know anytime change takes place, our kids, um, of course, every child's different, but they're going to struggle. They're going to go through some um, some patterns of loss, maybe fear. And I love the idea, um, Stephanie's talked about these small groups where we have um, staff ready to be paying attention to what signals our kids are sending to us when they're online, whether or not they're engaged. I know there's even a plan to measure engagement, which I think is so phenomenal, right? It's not just checking off the box that we did some virtual time with kids, but it's about paying attention to their engagement because that's an indication of how the child's doing. And then once we identify the child's not appearing to be engaged in these virtual settings, we'll be able to follow up with those students and support them as best we can with a team, exactly what Stephanie said, a team of people who are ready to respond. So right, we're paying attention, we're giving our kids space because we know they have to deal with a lot of the trauma, many layers of trauma specifically in the last few weeks. And so we'll have an opportunity in these small groups to be responsive and then connect with partners who can um, show up for kids, provide resources and connect with them as needed. Great. Yeah. And just to echo what the rest of the panelists said, it, it is all about relationships. That's the foundation. Uh, kids, they don't care what you know unless they know that you care. Um, yes. so that we're ready to meet families wherever they are and students wherever they are. There are going to be some students who are just unable um, to work with us in that virtual aspect. So as as Carrie said before, and Delenn and Stephanie, there is a whole team, a whole family 
um, uh, of staff from CEI, from Flint Community Schools, from YouthQuest, who are working together outside of that virtual space to still stay in contact with those kids and check in on them, not just academically, but emotionally to see how they're doing. And, you know, just as they're vulnerable before us, we're vulnerable before them. And it just further strengthens the relationship um, that we had even, you know, while the schools are closed, communication yeah. between staff and students never stopped. It, right. It's still going. So I'm really excited about continuing this partnership throughout the summer. Um, I'm excited right. for what's in store for our kids. And um, yeah, we're just gonna meet families where they are and continue to be responsive to their needs. Great, great, very excited. Thank you for that. So let's talk about how summer learning supports the curriculum and goals of the traditional school year. So this is not seen as a separate entity, but it, it continues to extend and support um, the traditional school year. Um, Delina or Stephanie, can, can one of you speak to that, please? Sure. Uh, so our curriculum team has been very focused throughout this year on three instructional pillars that go across all subject areas. And so we use the acronym FCS, in this case, not to stand for Flint Community Schools, but to remind us that our goals are around formative assessment, cognitive engagement, and student voice. And yeah. so this program has been designed around those three pillars. So throughout all four weeks, teachers will be constantly monitoring and adapting um, their instruction to meet the needs of those kids based on those formative assessments. Um, cognitive engagement was a big one. We talked about how we're going to get kids engaged cognitively virtually. And so I think we have a really pretty strong plan in place um, that involves a lot of inquiry and problem solving and game based activities. And then student voice is often overlooked, but our, our students need to be provided with choices and opportunities to share their thinking with their peers and realize that their thinking is as valuable as the teachers. And so there are a lot of built in opportunities for that as well. Great. Yeah. And so, Dr. Leverett, when we think about the traditional school year, uh, we, we have to think about standards. Um, because instruction during the school year is really designed to support students' mastery toward the standards. And the standards just uh, indicate what students know and should be able to do. And so the, the great thing is that our summer curriculum is also standards-based. Um, and so even though this summer experience is a virtual learning experience, because they're dealing still in the standards, students are gonna have the opportunity all across the summer mm -hmm. to strengthen what they already know and can do. And so really, if you think about it, this summer learning experience is gonna be a bridge um, into standards-based learning in the fall. Great. And Kim, if I could just chime in, chime in at least from a YouthQuest perspective, um, supporting the curriculum and goals of the traditional school year. For YouthQuest, uh, with academic support, it's all about aligning uh, with the academic goals of the districts that we serve. And while we have great relationships with the staff, because the school year is so busy, you've got teachers teaching and we're in the after school space, we're kind of in different orbits. And I think this summer is a unique opportunity for us to kind of be in the same orbit. Uh, YouthQuest will be able to be in the classroom with those teachers this year, um, this summer, so that we can actually uh, use some of their strategies in after school. So I think what we're doing this summer is actually going to help us to provide even higher quality programming in the fall. So I'm really excited about that unique opportunity that we're all going to be working together in the same space as one collaborative, integrated learning community. And I think it's going to benefit kids in the summer and beyond. Great. Thank you. So I'm excited. I'm a parent. I'm watching this webinar. And so how can parents learn more about this great opportunity in terms of the resources? Um, I'm interested in finding out more about registration. When does summer, you know, the virtual summer school start? I'm interested in signing my child up. How does that whole process work? Can we talk about um, the registration and where I would go to find out more information if I'm a parent and I'm watching this webinar? And, and so I want to be sure um, before the registration and, and all of that, I want to be sure to make sure to share the dates, the yes. dates for uh, the Flint Community Schools Virtual Summer Scholars Camp. And, and again, this is a K-12 experience. Those dates, it's a four-week program that uh, is going to run from June 29th through July 23rd, and that's Monday through Thursday. Great. Okay. 
June the registration for the program begins June 8th online. We want to make sure we're keeping everyone safe. Uh, so we're not going to have any in-person registration. It's going to be all online. And we'll be sharing the summer program details along with the link um, on our website uh, through YouthQuest. It's going to be shared through FCS. It's going to be shared through CRIM as well. Um, and of course, if you need more information, uh, at least from the youth quest end, you can always look us up on our Facebook page. We're on Twitter, or you can call us at 810-600-1422. Great. Okay. And I like this idea. I think this is so smart, right? So we're doing kind of one-stop registration. So mm -hmm. if kids are interested in youth quest and they're also interested in the Flint Community Schools uh, program, it's just register one time and you get all of the pieces. I think that's so um, kind of convenient for our families. They don't need to kind of sign up for all of the different opportunities separately. So when registration launches on June 8th, that's Monday, I'm so excited about it. When that registration launches, parents can feel very confident when they register for youth quest through um, the summer programming, they're also registering for the, the morning program at Flint Community Schools. They're getting the full package. They're getting all the support. So register once and get all of the supports. And I just want to reiterate, we're offering programs this summer from our littlest pre-K students. It looks a little bit different for them. We're being very intentional about not having them in front of the screen, right? Talk about best practice. We just know we don't need to have our three-year-old sitting in front of a computer for hours at a time. We'll be getting great hands-on um, activities. Um, and then also our K-5 program that Stephanie has talked about, and then our 6th through 8th graders have their programming as well, and Delin's talked about those, and also that high school level. And I think through the high school level, to be registering with their counselors, so if parents of high school students are interested in having their high school students have that opportunity, it really is a gift for credit recovery. You know, last night I was at the um, FCS graduation, so good, right, although it was Virtual, it felt quite different. So fantastic to see our Flint Community School grads um, receiving their diplomas. They hosted that at the US 23 drive-in, which I thought was so innovative. Um, really phenomenal to celebrate those. And so if we have parents who are interested in making sure their student, their high school student is able to um, recoup those credits, this is a great opportunity this summer. They should be contacting their counselors. Um, but as far as the other grade levels, they'll have one stop shopping for registration. And I, I'm sure all of our different Facebook pages, our um, websites will be blasting that registration. But just know if you get that link through the, the um, Youth Quest Facebook page and you register, your child's also going to be registered with Flint Community Schools for the summer program and vice versa. If you're registering through the Flint Community Schools Facebook page or their website, you're going to automatically also get signed up for Youth Quest. When we talk about wraparound services, really serving the whole child, this summer I think even with all the challenges, I think we've seen it as opportunities to figure out how to best serve our kids in the most convenient way for parents. Great, thank you. So I will start with you, Stephanie, just in terms of any closing remarks, what are you excited about as we continue to plan and come upon um, our summer session? So while this has been a challenging time for I think schools and students and teachers everywhere, I'm really excited about our partnerships that we have with CRIM, with YouthQuest. Um, I think we've come up with a pretty creative way to still engage our students. And I know I speak for all of us, we're really excited for, for uh, to begin the work with our students. And I think it's gonna be a really good time of learning for everyone. Thank you, Elian. I'm going to echo what Stephanie said. I think what I'm most excited about has to do with really working right alongside our community partners. I'm so excited about YouthQuest and CRIM being actually in the virtual classroom with us. So I, th I think I'm most excited about the integration of that because then as we move into the school year in the fall, you know, we, we will have learned some things about how to integrate our services to kids. Thank you. Terry? I, I'm really excited about the way the educational community has just come together to wrap their arms around these kids. And I'm excited for the summer program. Not only are they going to get to work with FCS and CRIM and YouthQuest, but they also get exposed to some other uh, really robust partners like Cranbrook Institute and the Algebra Project. I mean, it's an opportunity that as a parent, I wouldn't pass up. So I, I really encourage parents, you know, go out to the FCS website um, on, on the 8th, which is next Monday and sign your kids up. You will not be disappointed. They're going to have a great time. It's a time to explore. It's a time to connect. It's a time to engage. Great. Thank you so much. Carrie. 
Yeah. Well, I just think, you know, I, one thing I want to make sure is clear to parents. This is not like, you know, that traditional summer school that some of us maybe who are older, maybe I'm just speaking of myself, but think about when we were back in school and that looked like tear out workbook pages, right? The kids completed and you got a certain number of pages done, you know, maybe you got a sticker out of the basket, whatever. This is really innovative. And, I, you know, this team of ladies started planning back in October. And while there was no way that we were going to know what our community, our state or nation would be dealing with in this moment, the fact that that planning started so early on in the school year gave us a great opportunity to be ready to pivot and be nimble to make sure that we're not just kind of um, hoping that this works. We've got some great strategies in place and great opportunities for our kids that we are extremely confident kids are going to love it. And we do want to make sure that kids are showing up every single day. So we've even included some incentives. So kids, if they have great participation in that first week, they'll be able to earn a t-shirt. The next week, they'll be able to earn sunglasses. Those just kind of really simple ways for us to say thank you to parents to being committed to having their kids connecting in these virtual learning spaces and staying with the learning. And those incentives will continue on. And then those kids who participate in the whole all four week program will have an additional incentive that they can earn at the end. Um, we just want to make sure that our parents understand we miss your kids. We want to connect with them. Of course, the summer learning is so important, but I know it was mentioned a couple times before. It's really about relationships. Um, you know, so we want to make sure that kids are feeling connected. We want to connect with them. And I'm excited about the innovative programs that we have offered. Um, I want to make sure that families also understand meals will be provided in the summer. Um, so the meal program for Flint schools for the regular school year will end on June 19th. Um, or that week of June 19th, excuse me. Um, you can look to the um, Flint Community Schools website for the um, serving schedule for that. And then Sodexo staff, those hardworking food service members who have been serving our kids um, hundreds of thousands of meals while school buildings were closed. Um, they'll take a week off and they'll be right back to the kids on June 29th, um, making sure that our kids are getting great nutrition, doing it in a way all over the city um, so that kids can and families can get meals for um, their kids to make sure that they're getting well fed. So, the next step is to make sure that one of our kids are doing great and with some fantastic staff members who are missing your kids terribly. Um, they've got some great opportunities to get all these extra things as well, um, as far as incentives. Um, but we're really trying to think of the big picture and make sure that our kids are well served and getting exactly what they deserve, which is everything. I mean, I think if you could take that away from um, this webinar, right? We want everything for our kids in Flint because our kids deserve everything. Um, and so I like the idea that I, some districts I'm hearing are not doing any summer programming. And I love the idea that Flint is committed to making sure that they serve our kids well um, and making sure they're prepared um, for the next school year. Great. Thank you so much. So you've heard it here. I just thank you all so much for a great opportunity to talk with you about the exciting summer program that we are able to partner and uh, support our students with. And whether we're talking about the algebra project, whether we're talking about the mindfulness, whether we're talking about the enrichment opportunities that our students are afforded, the math, the literacy, we again, I cannot reiterate this enough, we are talking about programs that support the whole child. And that is so important so on behalf of the Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce and the education and training team, on behalf of the Community Education Initiative, uh, Carrie, you and your great staff with Lauren over there, and on behalf of our Flint Community School partners and Superintendent uh, Anita Stewart, Thank you so much for allowing us. I'm, I'm really excited, as Tari said, about how the partnership is coming together. And it is evident that we are putting actions together, but we are also executing our actions. And we cannot do this work without you. And it takes a village to make sure that our students in the Flint Community Schools are successful. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about the outcomes and successes of this program in the very near future. And I thank all of you ladies and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Go team, go. <laughs> thank you.